This is your last chance. After this, there is no turning back. You take the blue pill. The story ends. You wake up in your bed and believe whatever you want to believe. You take the red pill. You stay in Wonderland. And I show you how deep the rabbit hole goes. Remember, all I'm offering is the truth, nothing more. Wait, was this a single or double blind study? Or was it a randomized placebo controlled trial? <laughs> you have to see it for yourself. Hmm? Hello, and welcome to What the What, the show about fun facts and a little bit of science. Today, we're talking about how doctors find treatments and the best ways to find out if their data is better than other ways. But before we get any further, but first, if you like these videos, do me a favor, share it, tell your friends about it, a little subscribe button, like it, talk to me, I'll answer things, you can, we can chat. There's a whole comment section down there. Fill it out. So doctors want to study a new medication for treatment of a common condition. Let's say an allergy to cats. You poor son of a bitch. So the scientists recruit a bunch of volunteers that are allergic to cats, and then they give them the treatment and ask for feedback on how they felt. 75% have said it helped. We went over their chicken dinner. But other doctors just aren't buying it. Why? The data seems pretty clear. Let's look at why these results might not be accurate. First, the study was not blinded. Blinding means that either the study participants, in this case the cat allergy sufferers, or the research conducting people, or the researchers conducting the study, are not blinded to who gets the treatment. In our hypothetical study here, both the patients and the doctors knew who got the treatment. Single blind testing means that either the <laughs> is when one of them, either the people with the cat allergies or the doctors don't know stuff. Single blind testing is when either the patients or the doctors don't know who's getting the treatment. So in one hand you have a group taking a placebo and another group of patients taking the actual treatment. And somewhere along the line somebody needs to not know what's happening somewhere. <laughs> Double blind is when neither the patients nor the doctors know who's getting the placebo versus getting the actual treatment. Other studies have shown that a person's preconceived confidence in a treatment can influence the effectiveness of that treatment, whether it's true or not. Maybe you volunteered for this treatment because your love for cats and you really want a treatment that allows you to love all the cats in the world because that's the right way to do it. Or maybe you hate cats and you're trying to show your significant other that nothing will help and that it's not a good idea to get a sweet, adorable, innocent, perfect little kitten. Sounds like you need a treatment for hate in your heart. And as a researcher, if there's a lot riding on that treatment, you bet your stethoscope you want it to work. So with a blood, so with a double blind test, we can ensure that the patients do not get any kind of tips from the researchers on which treatment they're getting. And the researchers don't know which patients got the treatment. And therefore we are less likely to have results altered because some biased expectation of whether the treatment would work or not. In the end, results are results. In the end, results are interpreted objectively with as little bias as possible. Get the kitten. Secondly, in our example, there was no control group. That is, in order to accurately show that the new treatment works, it has to be compared to people that did not get the treatment. Because maybe these patients were going to get better on their own anyway because they spent less time around cats during the study. A control group can be another type of treatment for the same condition, or no treatment at all. But people know if they've been told to take a pill or not, so to keep them blinded they may take a placebo. But they won't know if they're actually receiving the medication treatment pill, but they won't know if they're receiving the actual treatment or a placebo. Since that could cause ethical concerns, the people who have volunteered for the study have to give informed consent, meaning they know that they might get a placebo instead of actual treatment and have to agree that this is okay with them. Heroes of science if you ask me. <laughs> 
Now, I, I hear you. You're asking me, what's a placebo? <laughs> Is that some Greek god? <laughs> Have you heard sugar pill before? <laughs> it's often a, a simple sugar pill that has no active ingredient. When testing new drugs, researchers will often have two to three groups of volunteers. The first group that gets the actual treatment, another group that gets the placebo or sugar pill, and then a third group that gets the best thing that's currently out on the market or some other existing treatment. This allows researchers to test not only if that treatment's good, but if it's better than the current thing or no treatment at all. If a patient thinks they might be getting an effective treatment, sometimes they do start to feel better and this is called the placebo effect. You know, how Ron Weasley only thought that Harry Potter actually put the liquid drops of luck in his drink, <laughs> but he didn't, and he still won the dang old Quidditch game. Or if you don't get that reference, the way that guy from high school buys those sketchy supplements from a gas station and thinks it makes him more attractive to women. It doesn't. But it is giving him the confidence to go out and start dating again. Then there's the blind double thing. It's random. Double blind randomized controlled trial. Or Deberkert. Deberkert. DBRCT. This is a study where neither the researchers nor the patient knows who's getting the placebo and who's getting the real treatment. It's randomized. Meaning the patients are randomly put into groups and they're either getting the placebo or they're getting the real treatment. And this helps to avoid selection bias. And it's controlled because we have a group that's getting the placebo and we have a group that's getting the treatment. This is the gold standard in testing. So in our little study example at the beginning, we talked about researchers given a drug, patients reporting back, 75% of them were great. So what could the researchers have done better for their study on the treatment of cat allergies. First, added a control group. Those would be the patients that are not getting the treatment so they can compare the actual different results. Next, randomly place the patients into the new treatment and the placebo control group. And finally, double-blinded the study. So neither the doctors nor the patients knew who was getting the treatment. In a later episode, we'll talk about a couple more very important factors of research study design that can make or break whether a study is validated and accepted by the scientific community, including the difference between protective and retrospective studies, and also the practice of peer review. In the meantime, what's a little sneezing here and there? <laughs> Get the kitten. As always, thanks for watching, and what did you learn today? Would you volunteer for a test like this and potentially not get the treatment? Do you understand why proper testing is important so you don't share an article online that claims to be helping people but there's actually no evidence of it helping anybody in any way and it might hurt more people than it saves?